welcome to another episode today the question is uh, is it always necessary to satisfy our ego is it always necessary to satisfy our ego but why is the ego it is merely a thought identification with your body and faith other than that you can't see mind or ego it's not that it is not a physical part it has no life on its own except what we give them the importance we give them to the thoughts and our self identity which is body rather ego and feeling i think more than that so what you are saying is uh, which is one thought which says i want this and another thought he says i don't want this so it is merely a fight between two thoughts the ego is a belief planted in us by the body and the circumstances surroundings that we are somebody we are something the ego is the individual sense it is the i am that identifies with certain forms feelings and concepts it's our own construct of the body mind phenomena next we will see osho's interpretation of this from his books ultimate alchemy volume 1 and sufis people of the path from that we will see what he says so man is born with the self but not with ego ego is a social construct a later growth ego cannot exist without relationship you can exist the self can exist but the ego cannot exist in itself it is a by product of being related to others so the sage says that in i and thou it exists it is a relator the child is born with the self but not with the ego the child develops the ego and he becomes more and more social and related ego develops the ego is just on your periphery where you are related to the others just on the boundary of your being self is the center and ego is the periphery that is figurative there is actually no center or periphery that is figurative the child is born with the self it is another innocent he is a self but he is not conscious of anything because he is an asset and the sense that ego exists it is, he is not, it is not there the first awareness of the surroundings and everything comes with this ego he becomes aware of the I not of the self really he becomes aware of first of thou the child first becomes aware of this difference you know between I and you when the ego develops Then he becomes aware of his body. He becomes aware of the objects surrounding him. And he feels he is separate. This feeling of separation gives ego. From ego, this feeling of separation comes. As he grows, the society needs you as an individual. as an ego not as a self not as an innocent person society has no use for a person a sensuous person a innocent person so the society develops it because 
an innocent person is irrelevant, meaningless for the society. Because the ego can be taught, taught made decide, and ego can be forced to be obedient. The ego can be made to adjust, but not the self. The innocent person, the selfless person, he cannot be made into anything. The self is intrinsically rebellious, individual. It cannot be made part of the society. So the society is not interested in your self. The society is interested in your ego because it can feed the ego. can starve the ego and manipulate the ego to do what it wants but nothing can be done with the self so the society helps to strengthen the ego and you go on living around that ego the more you grow more you become social and educated cultured civilized the more polished the ego you have then you begin to function from the ego not from the self because you are not aware of it all so your essence goes on into unconscious into inner darkness and the false construct social construct the ego becomes your center now you identify yourself with your ego with your name with your education with your family with your religion and your country so you identify with those things family society country religion these are all just part of your ego not of your self because the self does not belong to your parents the self does not belong to your country the self does not belong to any religion the self does not even belong to your self it does not belong it is a freedom it exists in its own right it does not belong to anything else it does not depend on anything else can we not love and accept our hate love mind the ego is just part of the whole life it is impossible because the very mechanism of ego is that it tries to pretend that that it is the whole it is complete that is the problem the ego says i am the whole and the ego is not ready to accept that it is only a part the ego says i am the king and i am the whole how can you love the ego and accept it as a part that is the very thing the ego denies i am not a part i am the whole the part claiming to be the whole is what the ego is all about the head claims and the whole can we not love and accept our heads our minds our egos as part of the whole life no there is no way you will have to look into the ego you will know what the whole is other ego pretends it is whole he will when the ego has disappeared there is nothing to claim it is whole then the whole comes the completeness comes into existence it starts functioning on its own there is a great harmony and you cannot love the ego because who are you the ego says that it it is total it is complete you are separate from others i and the ego who is going to love whom it is the trick of the ego no? the separation of i different from the ego the self from the ego the ego is trying to fool me the ego is trying why the try me can't you love me but who are you if you know yourself are separate from the ego then the question will not arise then you have 
become yourself you have attained your center and in that very attainment is that there is no ego there is nobody left to love and if you think that you can love the ego that is the dilemma the ego is what you are not if you are the ego the satyas they cannot both exist together just like darkness and light cannot exist together so when ego exists it is a veil on the self it cannot exist when the self exists then the ego disappears so with this we will end this episode stay with me for another episode subscribe to my channel share this video. Thank you.